Galveston and check out the beach. It's a beautiful day today. The weather's supposed to be perfect. I'm dressed in my typical weekend loungewear. I love to wear activewear on the weekends. I am gonna start the day with washing my face, coming in with the Aveeno Daily Moisturizing Facial Cleanser. But um, I've been trying out, actually I might use this. I've been trying out, Aveeno's got this new Calm and Restore Nourishing PHA Exfoliator. Polyhydroxy acids like gluconolactone, they very, very gently exfoliate the skin. And they also help with moisture retention. They're generally pretty friendly for people who have very sensitive skin but are looking for something to improve skin texture. And so this, you can actually apply to wet or dry skin. So I'm actually gonna put it on right now, just to dry skin, and then I'm gonna rinse it off. A creamy formula, and you don't need too much, but it's real liquidy, as you can see. It's not abrasive. There are no you know, particles or anything. It's actually kind of soothing on the skin. It's just a, you know, kind of a creamy liquid. No fragrance. And you can just massage it in. Of course, you could wet the face first. It has very little to no lather, though. It's gentle enough that you could use it daily. All right, I rinsed that off. Now, if you have really, really oily skin and you like to degrease the surface of the skin, I don't think you know this is really going to be enough for you. If that's the case, if you've got really oily skin, go with a salicylic acid cleanser first thing in the morning. That can help. I'm just gonna come in with a few drops of my Q10 serum because like I said, I'm going to the beach today, although I'm gonna have a hat and everything. Um, so I'm definitely gonna have a lot of sun protection on, but why not, of course, throw in a few antioxidants in there. I just do the three drops. Then I rub the backs of my hands together. And then of course for sunscreen, like I said in yesterday's video, I've been coming in with the universal tint, but when I go to the beach, I'm probably going to put on the Bondi Sands sunscreen, but I'm not gonna go for a few hours. So in the meantime, I'm gonna have this on. Um, I just use this as my daily facial moisturizer anyway, so I'm just in the habit of using it. This product is not water resistant, so for a time outside, I like to use water resistant sunscreen and I'm gonna do the Bondi Sands one. But see, when I go to the beach, when I get ready to go to the beach, I'm just gonna put this, the Bondi Sands on my face. I'm, I'm not gonna wash my face beforehand or anything like that. I'm just gonna put the Bondi Sands on my face. I'm not gonna wash anything off. Bondi Sands sunscreen is a chemical sunscreen that's water resistant. I also use it on my body. They make one just for the face, but I honestly don't see much difference between the face one and the body one. All right, time for a new candle. I got this Manly <laughs> Indulgence on the Amazonian. It sounded good though. Peppermint, vanilla, and gourmand. It's a soy candle. I mostly got it because it was black and I thought it was cute for Halloween. I'm just gonna pop it in my little ghost holder. It's also got one of those crackly wicks, which are oh so satisfying. There we go. Ooh, spooky. Perfect day to be at the beach. It's not hot, mild, not humid. I've got my UFO hat on, which houses my bun, sunglasses, this lightweight long sleeve sweatshirt, and then I've got my beach bag with, this came in a FabFitFun box, and I keep my phone in it out of the heat, but I also keep 
sunscreen, the Bondi Sounds SPF 50 fragrance free. So that's my beach bag. I also have a towel and my regular glasses. <laughs> and yeah, this was a freebie from Lancome. It's a nice beach bag. It's got the snap. Ready to go. Ah, it's a gorgeous day. You can rent chairs, umbrellas, loungers, a cabana, people in the water. Perfect day for a walk on the beach. It's not too far either. It's roughly an hour drive, so, and it wasn't particularly traffic y either. I love the little crab homes. Aren't they neat? Put that piece of seaweed there. Is that crab poop all around its home? There's the water tower there in the distance, Jamaica Beach. Kicked off my shoes. And I'm getting my feet wet. The water is warm and it's a great day. I did put on some sunscreen on my feet though. And of course my legs. are blooming. All sorts of uh, local flora. This is a really nice little beach park. This beach in particular, very well maintained, clean. Highly recommend it. Fun little way to stretch your legs. Looks like you can rent canoes too, or kayaks. And Ice water up there. Love these flowers growing here. See how well maintained this is? Like, they have a nice paved walkway. Then you can have a picnic there. It's nice and clean. Little grills. And over here they have a changing room with showers. So you can rinse the sand off. Fortunately, I didn't get too sandy.
dry order came. I shared this with you guys in a vlog a while ago, but I discovered this um, vegan thermal sauce called Indulge Right. They have a variety of different flavors. Comes with a little recipe. I love the chai spice flavor. They have a few other flavors I haven't yet tried, like a bourbon one. Anyways, it is made from coconut cream. It's delicious and it's sugar-free. It's sweetened with allulose and erythritol. It's delicious though. I highly recommend it and I have been putting it on anything and everything. Really good as a dip for apples. Great for the fall and it would make a great gift. Here's a look at some of the other flavors. They have a double chocolate caramel sauce and they also have an apple cinnamon one. And I believe there is like a bourbon vanilla one too that I haven't tried yet. Well, hey guys, what a great day at the beach. I just finished a run and I'm gonna hop in the shower per usual. But I have been making my way through the Hot Lava cleansing oil. This is an oldie but a goodie for me. I personally just prefer to use the same skincare products. I mean, I enjoy trying out the new ones, obviously, but you know, if it weren't for the purposes of this channel, I would just use the same things over and over again. Although, if it weren't for this channel, I never would have discovered this. So there you go. Um, like, I didn't do the double cleansing thing prior to starting YouTube. Like, I could kind of heard of it, but it just wasn't really something on my radar. And it, I think it's made a huge difference in my skin, just less dry skin overall. Um, and I do get questions, you know, can people with oily skin do this? Yeah, because you're gonna, you're gonna rinse this off. You know, having oils on left on the surface of the skin, it may aggravate some people's acne just because those oils, you know, possibly admix with your own oils and people with acne tend to have Sub, you know, severia, excessive oiliness, and that can lead to irritation. <clears throat> but the formation of the comedone, I mean, that is part of the pore, your pore lining in acne, it kind of just turns over in an inefficient manner and forms a little plug. And that's really the initial part of what kicks off acne. So the focus that people put on you know poor clogging ingredients and trying to avoid products that are going to aggravate their acne to a certain extent that's worthwhile because yeah anything that causes irritation is going to aggravate your acne but don't ignore the big guns when it comes to what actually drives acne hormones leading to more oil production those sticky skin cells clogging up the pore and leading to comedone formation and then the little bacteria that lives down in the pore, uh, Cutibacterium acnes. And Cutibacterium acnes, you know, in that plugged up pore, it starts to break down the sebum and the breakdown products of the sebum, that's what brings in a lot of inflammation and inflammatory mediators that kicks off, you know, makes the acne inflammatory. And so active ingredients that address acne, they target the inflammation, they target the pore clogging thing. They're antimicrobial, so they reduce um, cutie bacterium acnes. And they, um, you know, topical stuff that you can buy over the counter, it's not gonna really, it's not gonna address the hormonal component that actually leads to more oiliness. Now some products, they can remove excess oil from the surface of the skin. Just simply the basic skincare routine of taking off Cosmetics, dirt, residue, sebum cleansing uh, can help with that. The skin can become dry and irritated as a result of some of the acne treatments that you may be using or just maybe you naturally have dry skin. See, being oily, you can still have dry skin and a tendency towards dryness. And that, of course, can be made worse by topicals. So moisturizers are very beneficial for people with acne because if you don't, you know, kind of address the dryness issue that you may be experiencing, well, that can make the skin more prone to irritation, which can further aggravate the acne. So it's kind of a keeping it simple. Don't worry too much about the ingredients. If you find a product aggravates your skin, avoid it. But lists of ingredients that you see online, you know, that are 
quote, acne safe, acne, there's no such thing as, you know, an acne safe ingredient. I mean, it's an, or an acne. Unsafe. All right, I am out of the shower. I'm going to do the B5 hydration serum tonight. I kind of alternate these timeless serums, three drops, uh, you know, alternate as in different nights. I use different ones. Basically there's no logic involved. I'm just trying to make my way through them because I have all of them, but, um, I find they do add a little bit of a pep to my moisturizing step but not like a must have or anything like that this particular one the what did i just put on the b5 hydration serum is that what i just put on panthenol helpful for the moisture barrier but you can get that you know from a moisturizer now the q10 one is one i really like in the morning because the q10 and the matrixel and i shared this with you guys last night it's the avino common restore new redness relief moisturizing cream very thick i'm not going to put this one on tonight but i've been trying it out i really like it and it is if you um are somebody who tends to get very dry in the winter you might like this one i also love their uh daily moisturizing face cream this one is affordable for today that is um stuff is just getting so outrageously priced no hyaluronic acid no niacinamide um so if you're sensitive to those definitely give this one a try it's got oat flour in it as a matter of fact the um common restore does not have uh does not have common restore uh redness relieving moisturizing cream also is free of niacinamide and free of hyaluronic acid which for an anti-redness product is kind of rare facial redness frustrating condition to cope with you know there are topical agents that can get rid of the appearance of facial redness especially related to like rosacea if you have persistent facial redness um like rofate they work more as a temporary thing like if you're gonna have if you're gonna go out to an event or whatever and you don't want facial redness it'll clear it up for a bit there is a risk however with long-term use of those of rebound worsening redness um, so they're not like a treatment they're just kind of like a temporary band-aid almost like a cosmetic but laser treatment on the redness can help quite a bit um, pulse dye laser can certainly help address the persistent redness with rosacea you know it's all about avoiding triggers like if if heat is a big trigger for you like hot liquid drinking hot liquids uh hot soups which is frustrating you know this time of year you want to have those things but if you find that you flush with those you know try and stick to more lukewarm to cool uh the other thing is heavy moisturizers can aggravate the redness the symptoms of burning stinging for some people it's not a universal truth though certain foods many people find aggravate their rosacea probably because certain foods um can have vasodilatory effects making the redness worse i'm just putting on some some uh equate beauty moisturizing cream here and then of course uv rays definitely aggravate rosacea Another aspect of rosacea though, is that it has to do with those little demodex mites. And I know that freaks people out, but the demodex mites, I have a video on them. They're naturally live in our pores, but for people with rosacea, it seems as though they have an overabundance of those. That's why cilantro, which is topical ivermectin, works well for rosacea because it, in theory, reduces the burden of those little and boom mice. just like that i'm dressed but a lot of things a lot of treatments for acne they can actually end up being beneficial for rosacea the topicals for acne you know they can just be hard to tolerate in people with rosacea but it's not as though they're completely off the table like retinoids for example a topical retinoid whether it be tretinoin or adapalene if you can get somebody with a rosacea to tolerate that, it actually can be beneficial for them in the long run. The oral retinoid, isotretinoin, actually can be very beneficial for rosacea. Another one is azelaic acid. Azelaic acid can benefit both conditions, typically pretty well tolerated. But if you've got rosacea, I highly encourage you to check out the website rosacea.org because it's got a variety of helpful resources on there talks about you know common triggers 
certain foods people find to be problematic. It's got a diary you can download to track your symptoms. Um, and it's got really helpful information for um, patients with rosacea. So highly suggest that. Anyways, you guys, I hope you had fun coming to the beach with me today. What a beautiful, gorgeous day it was. I'm gonna wrap this video up, but if you enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.